wonder when it stopped recording. Okay, I think the, uh, I better... Bob here, Chopper Bob Customs. And I'm waiting on parts for the automatic transmission uh, lines and uh, getting started on the uh, air conditioning lines. I'm waiting on parts both uh, from uh, uh, online and locally. I'm also waiting on parts to uh, put in the radiator overflow tank and line for it. So I thought what I would do now is, um, while I'm waiting on those things, is get the uh, 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 fan trowel built. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some measurements and uh, you'll have to excuse my back. <laughs> the uh, what I've decided on is that I'm going to have it extend out from the core an inch and a half and that will give a good space for the fan uh, to draw air from all across the, the radiator but it'll also allow clearance between the shroud and the power steering box and the power steering hose. So an inch and a half and then the core itself from the face to the um, to the flange where it mounts is two and a half. So basically the sides of the shroud are going to be four inches on the right and the left and then an inch and a half on the top and the bottom. And then the flange itself is two inches wide. And uh, the width is 19, let's say 19 and three quarter. And the height of the core that we need to cover I'm going to say 17 and 3 quarter. Okay. So now with that, um, I'm not going to be able to use either brake uh, solely. I'm going to have to do some on my 36 inch uh, fixed brake and then I'll have to do some on my 19 inch finger brake to make this work. So. Uh, let me uh, let me move around and get the uh, camera down where you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, this is a piece of uh, thirty out three um, sixteen gauge aluminum. Um, it's got a protective coating on one side and so it's not necessarily protecting it completely but I figured this is probably going to be the best side when I'm all done with it and so this is going to be the exposed side. So most of my layout work will be done on this side right here. Um, what that uh, what those dimensions mean is that I've got two two inch flanges so two times two equals four I've got two four inch standoffs that's eight and then I've got the nineteen and three quarter and so
So four plus eight plus nineteen point seven five. Thirty-one and three quarters. Now, I also know that when I do the breaking of this, that number is not going to be accurate because when you when you do the break, you actually bend a, a radius into it, and what that ends up doing is it usually makes the part longer than you think that it's going to be, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out thirty-one and three quarter. Experience has shown me that it is not going to be any longer than this. If anything, it'll be shorter. But what I want to do will become apparent here in a minute. So we're going to go 31 and 3 quarter, and we're going to make a mark. And so with that, then we'll look at the overall height. The overall height is going to be two times inch and a half, or three inches, and then the width, oh, the, the height was 17 and three quarter, and I can do that one in my head. That's 20 and three quarter inches. That tells me that this can't be touched, but these edges here can be used to run test pieces with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some two inch wide <clears throat> test pieces. And so we'll go ahead and we'll make the marks at two inches. What I will do is I will make two pieces that will be lengthwise test pieces and basically these will correspond to this piece to this direction right here sometimes and I'm not that familiar with the aluminum I know on uh, particularly like stainless steel and carbon steel the um, the metal will get a grain and um, so the bending characteristics can be different if you're putting the, the bend across this way as opposed to when you're putting the bend across this way and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mimic this direction with these pieces up here and I'll mimic this direction with pieces that I take off of this end of the of the uh, sheet so on this end right here, I know I'm going to have a flange that's two inches, and experience tells me that that is probably too much, but when I make the test coupon, it will tell me how much too much, and then I can run another test piece with the uh, modifications to the lengths, and... Um, and then that way I'll be sure that this is as close as I can possibly get it when I actually go to make the part. I've got a four inch standoff and then I'm just going to arbitrarily go with a two inch extra so that <clears throat> I can have a measurement on how much the flange is going to grow, how much the standoff is going to grow, and how much the overall length of the, um, of the uh, shroud is going to grow uh, where the fan actually will mount. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark this out and then I'll cut it out and I'll run a test break on it to see what I end up with. And so what this will be is this will be the two inch flange the four inch standoff
and the two inch test length. And then I will come over here to this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lay out a two inch wide strip. I'm going to lay out the inch and a half standoff. And then I'm going to create a two inch test length. An inch and a half stand or an inch and a half standoff. And a two inch test length. And then up here in this corner, at, right in here, uh, what I'm going to do up here is I'm actually going to do a corner fold setup so that I can test how the brakes work and how the corner is going to come together for doing the weld. I'm only going to have one shot at this. So this piece right here I'm going to go ahead and lay out now, but I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on getting it done until the time comes to actually do it. And what this will look like <clears throat> is <clears throat> I'm going to do a two inch I think I've got enough material here. So this will be and, and for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a mark. Because what will happen is this will fold over. And I'm just going to put a dashed line here to indicate that this is probably going to change. Now this 2 inch over here does not need to change. Because if it grows to, I don't know, let's pick a number, 2 and an eighth that's going to be okay because basically what I'm really checking is how far this corner comes together. This width here and this width here on this piece really have no bearing just so long as they're the same. Um, so that will be the standoff that will fold up this way. This will fold up this way and then the last one will fold over the other way. This will also let me know how the um, how the part is actually going to function in the brake. I am going to be using the finger part of the brake to actually make this box, which is what it boils down to. It's going to be is a box or a pan, whatever you want to call it. Okay, now I will, like I said, when I get the test coupon done, I will come in and change these dimensions to match it. But for right now, I'm putting the dash lines in so that I know this is a piece that I'm going to be using at the very end. At the very end of the test session. 
This tab right here will fold over. This tab right here will fold over, fold over. And I will have a corner joint that I'm hoping that I can run a weld bead down there to give it a finished appearance rather than just having two, two edges come together. So with that, uh, I'm gonna start cutting. Uh, I'm gonna cut out the test coupons and we will uh, run the first series of tests to see how it uh, pans out. Okay, I've made one slight modification to the saw. I've gone ahead and put a um, <laughs> masking tape on the base plate of it uh, so that if there's any scratches or burrs in the steel, it's not going to put a mark on the uh, aluminum. At least that's the hope because the aluminum is a lot softer than the, uh, than the steel. And if it's got a scratch or embedded trash in it, it's going to be an issue. Now that's the not so critical side. And what that told me was what I'm going to have to be concerned with about the blade wondering. Okay, I've got the brake set up tight. So it's going to put in a real sharp uh, bend on this one. Now this is going to be um, the inch and a half standoffs, which will be bent on this brake. Um, they're... Uh, they're 19 and 3 quarter inches wide, which is too wide for my uh, press brake on, with the finger brake. And so they'll have to be done on this one right here. Um, so I'm going to line this up with the edge of the line that I've drawn. I'm going to try and be as accurate as possible. Um, truth of the matter is there will be inaccuracies that creep into this regardless and so the more accurate you are the less those will affect you. And we'll give it a hopefully 90. I've tried using a gauge on this, it doesn't work that well, and I think I actually just went a little over. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tight. That's really close. And as you can see, I've got a nice tight break on it. So now what we'll do is we'll come back around over here. And we'll measure to see what we've accomplished. Here's an idea I learned from Bellows Customs. You take your old damaged um, uh, tape measures and you cut short sections off and then you can use them to measure with in tight areas like this. So I'm a little over one and nine sixteenths. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm at one and nine sixteenths. So the flange grew a sixteenth of an inch. One and nine sixteenths. So 1 16th of an inch, which means that when I measure the final piece, I should make the mark at 1 and 7 16ths inch. And then the length is 2. So it grew a 16th of an inch. So on this break, it follows very closely to what theory tells you is that it should grow 
the length of the thickness of the material in both directions. So basically, I need to take a sixteenth inch off of both sides, and I need to take a sixteenth of an inch off the standoff. So minus one sixteenth all around. Okay, so there's the first test piece. And what I'll do is I'll come back in and make another one of these with the corrected lengths. And we'll see how that works. I'm going to have a one. One and seven sixteenths break line. And a one and fifteen sixteenths. I left just a smidgen of the line on the part. Now for the not so critical cut. Let's take one more break at it. should have cut the line off <laughs> because what we've got now well that's two inches so I'm in good shape there and I'm inch and a half so this tells me to take a sixteenth inch off of both directions when I lay out uh, these lines, top to bottom, the ones that run side to side. So I know where to go with that now. So, with the test pieces for that done, I'll set them aside for now. So now the question is, I know I'm going to be using the um, uh, the swag off-road finger brake um, and that's going to have a different radius on the brakes two of them anyway and so um, this first test piece that I run is going to be I'm going to be checking a lot of different things with it and so I believe what I'm going to do is just go with a straight test and we'll see how this works <clears throat> torn my tape already Okay, now I believe because of the four inch standoff that I am going to be able to use the conventional brake to break this part because, okay, so the two inch flange will be like that, the standoff, and then this test piece will actually be this piece right here. And so when I break this up, yeah, I'll be able to put that break in without any problem. So let's get it set up and put the first break in. Now this one, what I'm going to have 
do is I'm going to have to transfer the measurement to the other side because it's going to break the opposite direction. And so Now, let me get the uh, camera moved and the brake set up, and we'll see what this hat does. I've got the, uh, the brake set up uh, so that the uh, uh, fingers are directly on the, um, the line. Uh, the fingers on uh, the swag brake um, have a flat spot on the bottom and then I've also installed the two and a quarter and the two inch angle which tightens the bend radius up um, and so now we'll try and do a 90 degree on this trying to make sure that it doesn't try to move on me it's got a good grip You can actually go past 90 with this brake, so you have to watch it. And what I did there was I ran it down until it just um, touched on the flat. I think I probably need to put just a little bit more in it. Yeah, I need a little bit more of an over bend to make it work. It doesn't look it may have walked just a little bit, but the thing is when I go to make the actual piece, the whole thing about this is uh, trying to make a duplication of what you've done, and so hopefully if I've made an error while I'm doing it, <laughs> that I'll make the same error when I actually make the part for the car. And this isn't like machining, I mean, uh, there's some wiggle room. I will fit the, uh, the shroud to the radiator, radiator, um, before, Actually, I'll probably try to do the welding while it is attached to the radiator. <clears throat> Let's see, we got the angles now. I think that did it. Oh yeah, looking good. Okay, let's go back over to the bench and see what kind of measurements we got. This is where this table also comes in handy in that uh, measuring this piece with the uh, Z shape to it is a bit of an issue. So let's see what we've got here. We have got this one growing eh, not quite a sixteenth. And that was the break that I put in with the, um, uh, with the regular 36 inch break over here. Let's see what's happened to the four inch offset. The four inch offset has, whoa. <laughs> uh, four and three sixteenths. So, let's make sure that's correct. Actually, it, it, it might be closer to four and a quarter. It's a little bit more. So basically, on the four inch dimension, I'm going to have to take off three sixteenths of an inch. I 
What's weird is <laughs> using the same brake, it's the same, it's the same offset. It only grew a sixteenth in this direction, but it grew three sixteenths in this direction. I think that's probably because it walked a little bit when I was breaking it. Um, the line is down a little bit past the center of the curve. Not much, but it is down there. So, oh, I need to take three sixteenths inch off the four inch. Oh, oh. I know why, in part, is because I've also got this down here and this up here, so I've doubled it, so it's, in theory it should be an eighth and it's three sixteenth. Um, I think what I'm going to do is go an eighth uh, and try and hit it right. The, the thing about it is, if this is too long, the top and bottom standoffs will have a gap between the standoff and the radiator. If this is too short, the standoffs at the top and the bottom of the radiator will hit the radiator. And I don't really want that to happen. So I'm going to remove an eighth on the four inch measurement and I'm going to move, remove a sixteenth on the flange measurement and a sixteenth on both sides for the overall length measurement. And based on this, I'm not going to go ahead and run a second test piece. I'm going to go ahead and throw a caution to the wind and run this corner piece with the corrected measurements on it. So let's see how this works. And okay, so I've laid this out with the corrections to the lengths. And we're going to give it a go here. got a couple fingers, three fingers actually pulled out of here. I've got the uh, line just barely hidden. Got it up against the finger over here. And I'm going to go ahead and put the 90 in it now and see how this goes. And that's going to leave a little bit more of a gap there than I would like to have seen. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I'm not set up to MIG weld. Uh, what I may do is see about tacking a, a rod in there as a backer. Uh, let's go over to the car and see how it fits. Got, uh, I got a little bit of a gap between it and the fins, but that's okay because when I get it actually up here in place, it's going to be tucked under this shelf of this tank. And uh, 
it's going to have, I mean, these things leak a little bit of air anyway, but uh, this is actually going to be a pretty good seal. And it fits just ever so nice. Um, I am happy. And so I'm going to see now if I can get this welded. Um, we'll see what happens. Rock and Robin was by and we tried some of our changes to the methodology that I was using on building this and we built a uh, uh, fan shroud for a project he's working on and so I have really high hopes that this is going to translate into making a good uh, good showing on this one so I'm going to go ahead and get it laid out I've already got a couple of the lines on here made. I've repositioned the camera so we've got the brake here. Um, I'm going to put in, this is too long for the finger brake so this will be the first brake that I put in. This will be either the top or the bottom. Uh, same thing with over here. And then I'm also going to put in the um, last flange brake. Um, because this makes a sharper break and it's a lot easier to do now than it would be on the finger break. So with that said, I've got this set up and um, I'm ready to make the first break in it. Perfect. So let's get the other one. And I went just 
a little too far on that one, but it's really, really close. So now the next one, I'm not sure. I don't think it's clear. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it the hard way. <laughs> uh, feel for this break. It'll pull out. <clears throat> We're almost got it done. One more stop. Okay, so I don't know whether anyone noticed or not, but on that last break I put on the uh, non-finger brake. <laughs> I put it in backwards. Uh, you know, I occasionally make mistakes, uh, but I managed to get it uh, uh, straightened back out, a uh, little bit of uh, forcing it into position, and then taking the no radius wheel on the English wheel and planishing it flat. The next challenge that we have is that uh, getting it into this brake, there's not enough room to get the finger over. So what I'm going to have to try and do here is drop the bottom down. Uh, this will stay with the uh, with the rest of the uh, uh, press, I hope, and then um, sliding it in and then bringing it back up. <laughs> we'll see how this works. makes sense because when I did the test piece I had to uh, go to one side of the backstop so I should have known that it wasn't even clear so now that I know that I've got the right width now all I got to do is get everything assembled back to where it was
Okay, one of the things we learned on Rock and Robin's car, or Rock and Robin's unit, was that if this flange right here gets over, well, I got about maybe a quarter inch clearance there, so about an inch and three quarter, and that's with both spacers in it. I think if I had both spacers out, we could have gone down further, but that also would leave you with a, uh, with a, uh, larger bend radius um, I think the thing to get is the uh, the uh, tight uh, bend radius plate that they make and that's like it's one of the things that's on my wish list so we'll see but I'm gonna have to uh, basically take this back apart again so uh, rather than subject you to a bunch of music I'm going to go ahead and pause and I'll be right back. I, I forgot to turn the camera on for the welding. So that's okay, you didn't miss much. I was struggling. Uh, true to form, um, the welds I put in on Robin's uh, um, shroud, while they weren't perfect, uh, they were pretty good and I didn't struggle a lot with them. Uh, these are less than perfect and I struggle with a whole bunch of them. But now what I gotta do is I gotta make some release for the um, overflow tube uh, brackets. And um, so basically what I'm going to do is the correct side.
holes elongated, ready to bolt it in. Well, I got some cleanup work, obviously. It's got the, I gotta do a little filing, a little sanding. But, uh, the other thing that needs to be done is there needs to be little reliefs uh, in the corners here so that the, um, uh, the, the plate on the uh, radiator will go up. inch NPT to number four rated stainless steel with a N fins and that is with an NOS nitrous oxide fitting that will almost go in there. I'm going to have to go back and when I edit the video see where the camera stopped recording. Uh, I know I forgot to set the recording for uh, doing the welding. Um, that's really kind of okay. Uh, you've seen me well before. I kind of struggled on this one. Of course true to form when I welded uh, Robbins up for the project that he's working on it welded up just great and then I went to weld up my project and I struggled with it. But I got it done, and uh, it's it's a pretty good looking uh, shroud. Uh, don't have the hole cut for the fan yet. I got to make sure that fits. Got to uh, probably pull the uh, uh, the tube holders out, and then I'm going to have to I'm going to have to see if I can get a 180 for dash four someplace because um, that's what I'm really going to need. Um, what I've done up here because this is 1 16th NPT as close as I can tell uh, I couldn't I had a hard time finding anything that would get me out to a dash 4 and then it hit me to look at uh, nitrous oxide system stuff NOS and that right there is an NOS 
adapter for um, AN4 to uh, 16th NPT. So we're going to have that. We're going to, uh, and then uh, uh, braided stainless uh, dash four line coming down, coming through this loop right here, and then it's got to do a 180 into the bottom of the overflow tank. Uh, the only thing I could find right off the bat was a was a was a 90. Uh, I might. The only thing I could find on the compression fitting for the quarter inch tube was a black one, and so I may have to get a black 180. I'm going to have to go out and see what's available, and I'm probably going to be putting together an order. But at any rate, I've got a fan shroud set up for the car. Um, we'll. Uh, I've got to uh, paint the uh, brackets for the um, AC condenser and the transmission cooler and get the lines all hooked up and we're getting there. The fan shroud has been tested on the car with the radiator and all the other parts that go on to the radiator core support and it all fits really good and the fan basically just needs to be centered. Uh, there's plenty of clearance between it and the uh, water pump pulley. Um, so uh, what I've done is I've determined that on this particular fan uh, it has a cage around the blades and just outside the cage is the opening and so basically anything from 15 and 3 8 in diameter to 15 and a half inch in diameter is going to um, work really well. I'm going to go 15 and 3 8 simply because if the saw wanders a little bit I'll still have plenty of room for this lip out here which actually contacts the surface to contact it. I intend to use... I'm de I've been debating. Uh, these holes right here simplify the installation quite a bit, make it look a little less cumbersome these brackets are a little bit more robust, I believe. Um, I'm just not quite sure how, which way I want to go with this yet. So, but I'm putting off drilling the, uh, the four holes to mount it until I think about it, which is going to have to come up pretty quick here. Um, so what I've done is I've gone ahead, I don't know whether you can see the lines or not, but basically I found the center of the uh, shroud and I've drilled a quarter inch hole in it and then I've taken this piece of aluminum that I had in my scrap bin and I drilled um, uh, 7 and 11 sixteenths which is half of 15 and 3 eighths drilled two holes a quarter inch right here and a 7 I think it's 7 30 seconds that just perfectly fits the sharpie it just goes in there with actually a friction fit so I've got this snugged up with a couple of uh, uh, fender washers and a nut on the back side and so I should be able to draw a perfect 15 and 3 8 inch diameter circle that I will then have to cut out with the saber saw and the line ended up where it started which is always a good thing and Hey, well, it's a little under 15 and 3 eighths. It's about 15 and, and a, well, it's a little bit more than 15 and a quarter. So basically, if I run the saber saw directly on the line, I should be in really good shape with the fan and we're ready to go. And first thing I've got to do is make a pilot hole for the saber saw. Um, I'm doing it down at the bottom so that if I do have a hiccup it won't be as noticeable.
Now the duct tape doesn't completely eliminate the vibration from the unsupported piece, but it does go a long way to making it a little bit more bearable. So you've got your pizza. Just like that. Okay, there we have it. Of course, when I do the final install, I'll use some uh, probably blue Loctite on the um, threads of the bolts. Uh, but all right. Okay, going handheld for a little bit here. Um, I basically have the brackets uh, complete. The transmission cooler and the condenser are basically finally installed. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, blacked out the, the radiator so it sort of has the composite look at the front here. Um, the radiator is probably going to have to come out one more time. Uh, the condenser and the transmission filter or transmission cooler, uh, probably not unless I absolutely have to. Um, and I may not actually have to pull the radiator out again. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, but I thought I'd come around and, and show. I, I will have to uh, at least pull the bolts out of the fan and uh, uh, make sure that they're locked in place good. Uh, but there is the shroud installed. Uh, I still have to put the overflow tank on. I've got the uh, fitting ready to go. Uh, but I still need to get uh, a fitting for the end of the hose at the tank. I need a, a 180 for that. So I gotta get a dash four 180. 
at any rate, um, I've also been kind of getting prepared to work on the um, heater core lines and the AC lines to the evaporator. Um, in looking at this, these holes down here actually were for the heater core, and I believe what they were was that was where the metal tubes from the heater core passed through, probably with some form of grommet around it, and then the heater hose is attached out here. So I'm going to have to figure some way to get that grommeted. I'll probably look into putting some... There, he's got some plastic uh, butt connectors for the heater hose inside. What I may do is I may see if I can find a grommet that fits them, that fits this hole, and use them to pass through on the heater cores um, hoses. And then I've got to plug up this hole right here. That It's horrible. <laughs> and there's one right here that they've put in. And then I need to um, fill the blower motor hole. And I've got, um, I'm thinking I've got a way to put this um, grommet made specifically for the number six and number 10 where it passes through the firewall. Um, and I think I'm gonna be able to use that probably right through where the blower motor went if I make a plate and attach it in there. Anyway. This is basically what's involved in building an aluminum fan shroud. And uh, we've got good clearance with the, uh, with the steering box and everything else. And uh, it should draw a lot of air. Whereas before that fan was just set right up against the, uh, the radiator. And I've got clearance between the pulley and the, uh, the back of the fan motor. So we're in good shape there. So. And that's all for doing the fan shroud for now. Um, uh, keep watching. Uh, I'm going to get this 58 Delray out of here. And uh, it's got some neat stuff on it. I'm going to fix a lot of the things that the uh, guys that built it previously did. And, uh, uh, and then, of course, we doubled the horsepower, basically. So it's going to be a runner. Anyway, uh, for now, please subscribe. Uh, please set the notifications. Tell your friends, uh, have them watch, have them uh, <laughs> subscribe, comment, like, set the notifications. Let me know how I'm doing on the comments. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. And for now, Chopper Bob out.